As we all know, saving money is very hard to do in general, and there are many ways in which someone can save their money. However, there is a certain limit as to how much one can save. So I thought it'd be interesting to talk about things that I stopped buying in order to save money and build wealth. So let's get started. Hello everyone, and for those who are new, my name is Sarah. I'm a computer engineer, and this channel covers all things engineering, personal finance, and personal development. So I'm gonna get right into the video. The very first thing that I don't buy or have stopped buying is anything to do with high maintenance stuff. So things such as getting your hair done, um, getting your nails done, or having very expensive makeup, all of those things I don't buy. And the main reason why is because I do a lot of work remotely, so I don't have to be you know, presentable in that sense. So that's actually very beneficial. Looking nice is good, yes, but having that makeup on every day is not only bad for your skin and it'll clog up your pores, but it's not always necessary. And most of the time people don't really notice. They don't really care about that. They care more about themselves. It's also very time consuming. Going and getting your hair done or getting your nails done takes at least one to two hours. So it's very time consuming and I like to spend my time going outside or being more active and sitting in a salon for three or four hours is not very exciting to me personally. So I would rather spend my time doing other things that I actually like to do. So if you're someone who is trying to cut back and save money, one of the things that I'd suggest is to cut out any sort of high maintenance care. The second one is common, it's takeout food. We all know that eating out at a restaurant or eating out in general can be very, very expensive and it doesn't even include the tip. Things can be up to 20 to $30 for one person and it's something that I personally stopped doing. A lot of the times I make my own lunch and dinner and it's the same thing every day. So it makes it easier for me personally to have a meal plan and to get that ready and prepped so I don't have to worry about calling in an order or having my order delivered, which is is also another expense in and of itself. Having a meal plan saves me a lot of money. I know exactly what I need to get and it just makes it so much simpler and it's one less thing that I have to worry about. The next thing are books. I don't have a lot of physical books or paperback books, but I do have eBooks and I read on like a Kindle or on my iPhone and that has helped me in terms of learning about finances, investing, anything I wanna know to educate myself. However, there are times where it would probably be a good idea to not buy those books and that's something that I kind of stopped in the last couple of months or so. I didn't really want to spend another $15, another $20 to get that book. Instead, I would go to public libraries in my local area and rent out those books. And this also applies to audiobooks. A lot of the public libraries nowadays have made audiobooks available at their local library. So if you're someone who loves reading, I definitely suggest probably going to a public library and renting those books. The next one is any subscriptions that you don't use or don't use very often. Now, personally for me, I got rid of any sort of subscriptions that I don't use at least three or four times a week. So things such as Disney Plus or Hulu, those things I don't use very often. I don't watch shows on there very often. So I've gotten rid of them. Realizing that I was able able to save a lot of money that way because I'm only spending a subscription for one channel or one item instead of multiple that I may or may not use. And now that streaming has become more and more popular, a lot of people are spending money on many different types of subscriptions that they're not even using. And it doesn't help that these companies can kind of play tricks in a way that they offer a free month subscription and get people to sign up. And once they've signed up, they forget about that monthly subscription and they get charged for that. And that's exactly what those companies want. But yeah, that's the next one is to cancel any sort of subscriptions. I've saved a lot of money that way. And I think it's something that's a good idea to do if you're trying to save money. The next one are updates. So any sort of updates that have to do with the iPhone, for example. A lot of the newer iPhones aren't much different than the older ones, and the older ones aren't even that old to begin with. They're still really good phones. The only differences that I've noticed personally are the cameras. Other than that, it's not really that much different, and I honestly think that it's best to just stay away from any sort of upgrades to anything that just seems like it's not going to really impact you significantly. The iPhone is just one example, but there are other things like your laptop. A lot of laptops are very good nowadays and having an upgrade on your laptop or an update 
it doesn't really significantly impact your quality of life, so to speak. So if you're trying to save money, avoid any sort of updates or upgrades that you don't think will benefit you very much. And I noticed that when I stopped doing that, I ended up saving a lot of money because I don't have that need or desire to get the new iPhone, to get the new laptop, if my current iPhone and laptop are still working just fine. And so the next one are items on sale. Now there's a difference between buying an item and having it be on sale versus buying an item because it's on sale. The sale price is probably good and it's probably you know, 30, 40% off. However, you are still paying X amount of money. So for example, if a t-shirt costs $30 and let's say it's 50% off, so now it's 15 and you see that, oh, that's a great deal, I'm going to buy that. Yeah, it is a good deal. However, you're still paying those $15 and you have to ask yourself, do I really actually need this t-shirt? And if you don't, well then you kind of threw those $15 down the drain, so to speak, because you didn't need that t-shirt to begin with. And the only reason why you got it is because you knew in your mind that this was on sale, this is a good deal, the deal might not happen again. And so because of that, people tend to spend a lot more money when something is on sale. Now this is something that I'm struggling with in terms of food. When food is on sale, it's kind of my kryptonite. So I'm trying trying to pull myself back whenever I see a sale and to not spend that money. And I end up asking myself three questions, which are, do I need this? Do I want this? And will I actually eat this? So having to ask myself those questions gives me like a moment to pause and to process what I'm doing before I actually grab the item, put it in my cart and then check out. And most of the time, like 80, 90% of the time when I ask myself these questions, I end up just putting it back on the shelf because it's something that I either don't need or I don't want it. And the only reason why I'm getting it is because it's a good deal. On the other hand, if it's something that you usually get on a weekly or monthly basis and it just happened to be on sale, then that's great. Just make sure you ask yourself those three questions and I guarantee it'll definitely help you in determining whether or not you'll actually get that item and to save more money. The next one, which is similar to number two, is any sort of high-end clothes. All of those name brand clothing stores can be very, very pricey. And staying away from any of those is a great way to save money. And if you set yourself a limit on to how many shirts or pants or shoes you buy will save you hundreds or thousands of dollars throughout the year. I personally do this. I only have a set amount of shirts that I go through every week because I notice I like to wear similar shirts or the same things. I also like the idea that I don't have to worry about having all of these other clothes or having to resell them or to get rid of them because I'm not using them anymore. As I had mentioned earlier, I do work remotely so I also don't have to worry about the actual outfit that I wear. But in the past when I did did, I honestly just wore three, maybe four outfits and cycled through those every week. And a lot of the times people don't really even notice what you're wearing, so it's no big deal. And if you do need new clothes, then going to a thrift store is a great way to save money. And so the last one are cars. Now I have a 2018 Honda Civic hatchback and I bought it new in 2017 when I first got my internship as an engineer. And the main reason why I got this car is not only for transportation to and from my internship, but also to build my credit score. The interest rate was low, it was at 2%. However, I didn't realize that it's not a good idea to buy new and it was about, I think, $24,000 at the time and I was paying $460 a month. Luckily though, I was able to cover that expense because I was working as an engineering intern and I was getting paid $24 an hour and I was living at home so I didn't have to worry about rent but I didn't realize how much that actually cost me in the long run. I did the math and it's probably upwards of hundreds of thousands of dollars that I could have saved and invested. I still have that same car. There haven't been any sort of issues with that car so I'm going to continue using it until it's unusable. So for those who need any sort of transportation and are still wanting to save money and not spend so much, then looking for a used car that has good mileage and can get you from point A to point B is a great way to save money and to spend less. And the other thing I would like to mention is with spending money on products, those things are good in the short term, probably a short high immediately. However, I noticed that in the long term, it doesn't really make a difference. Realizing that also helps in 
in deciding whether or not you should spend money on this product or this food. And personally, what I've done is focusing more on experiences because those are memories that will be with me forever. And those are the memories that I will think of when I'm older, not what I bought or the things that I had. That's another great thing to keep in mind when trying to decide if you should spend money on this particular product. So yeah, those are all the things I can think of right now that I've stopped spending my money on. And in a way I'm getting a pay raise because I have more money to save and to do with what I wish. I hope you guys liked this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And yeah, if you have any other video suggestions, please let me know in the comment section down below. And thank you for watching. Bye.